Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponder on Weather here. We've got a lot to talk about in this update with numerous record high temperatures broken along with a powerful jet that will have an increased severe weather threat overnight with very large hail and a tornado risk for the upper Midwest. Then a powerful strong cold front will drop temperatures 50 to 60 degrees some wind chills below zero with snow on the backside and then we're right back up to record high temperatures again by sunday that's all the next six days folks so buckle up it's going to be a wild ride taking a look at the overall water vapor imagery this morning we've got the southwest wind this is the low level jet further south that's spreading some higher clouds further south into the southern plains but it's the northern branch. This is the cold front that we're concerned about. This all will be moving eastward along with this more active subtropical jet that will set the stage for a round of severe storms in all three modes and an upgrade for severe weather into the evening time frame. So I appreciate all my subscribers out there. I would love to reach 250,000 subscribers. So if you are new here, you can help me get there by hitting the subscribe button. I'm pretty much here on a daily basis to keep you well ahead of the storm. So let's take a look at some of these record highs just yesterday, because there were so many that fell. In fact, we had upwards to over 70 reported record high temperatures. There was a place in Dallas, into Texas there, Colleen, Texas actually hit the triple digit mark, 100 degrees already. But look at the surge well north, all those areas into that magenta color. That's some of those tying, if not almost breaking the all time highest temperatures in February that you've ever seen. So this, we're in rare territory folks, especially as far as the number of record high temperatures. And we've got a lot more to set today, but here's the dynamics on the surface map and what we're dealing with. We've got the powerful low level jet. You can see there's not much moisture with that jet stream, but further north on the Northern side, there's the powerful cold front that's dropped all the way down into Nebraska, back behind it, very cold temperatures, and there's going to be a swath of snow, but it's this low pressure highlighted over Minneapolis, and as the low level jet, and look at the warm front. <laughs> That's very rare, folks. Look at the warm front lifting all the way to Canada. It covers the entire state of Michigan. That's allowing those warmer temperature anomalies to lift all the way up to the Canadian border. That's the dynamics that we're concerned about. And it's that triple point getting into the evening time over into the upper Midwest that all three modes of severe storms are going to unfold, but it's not before more record highs are set today. In fact, here's the latest update with another 78 record high temperatures as those 90s and 80s surge through the Southern Plains. Look at folks, I mean, we're talking mid 70s for Illinois, upper 70s potentially. That could break some all time record highest temperatures you've ever seen in the month of February. And with that, warm front lifting all the way to the Canadian border. That's what's allowing these temperatures into the seventies. This is unheard of to see this, this, uh, you know, in February time, but this is what we're dealing with. And there's the sharp temperature gradient back behind that front. And you can see the very intense Arctic air that's dropping on the backside. Those are high temperatures into the teens up there in Montana and to the Dakotas. That's the, that's, the, that's the cold front that will be diving southeastward. But it all gets going, I think, once we hit sunset. Once we hit sunset, here's your low-level jet combining with that low pressure coming out of Minneapolis. And it's going to set up right there in northern Illinois, just I likely south of Milwaukee region. That's where we could start to see some supercell thunderstorms start to fire around six o'clock. We could get some isolated bubblers. Those are gonna be some big time hell producers when they do form. That could grow to some two inch per out, two inch diameter hail, if not larger within that vicinity. If you take a look at the latest high resolution guidance, this is what we're highlighting. There in Davenport, when you potentially hit mid 70s, maybe upper 70s today, 
with that cold front getting closer and that low pressure center that's going to provide the upward rising motion air and the supercell thunderstorms and having that towering thunderstorms to start to explode and these isolated supercells at least in the beginning are the ones that are going to produce those big time hell producers in the Davenport area, right around the Rockford region, heading into Chicago, could lift as far north as the Milwaukee region. That will swing over to South Bend. And it looks to be there's a there's a northern side to this system, but there's also a southern side of this system as well. And this is the main reason while the Storm Prediction Center has up the ante on this particular threat, they do have the northern mode with an enhanced risk, right? Right where those supercell thunderstorms are going to explode as we head into the evening uh, time. But that those systems are have a northern mode. So those areas into Milwaukee, back into Chicago, through the Grand Rapids region, all the way to Detroit. And then even further south, there's a renewed threat with more supercell thunderstorms. And that could actually be more of a tornado threat as well. Swinging all the way into Springfield does include the St. Louis region especially in the Paducah region and to Louisville, back into Cincinnati, heading up into Columbus. That I think will be later in the evening. We're talking seven, eight, potentially nine o'clock and then into the overnight uh, with a bumpy ride. But I think it all starts with some big time hell producers right where those supercell thunderstorms are gonna initiate on the leading edge of the of this northern, northern side of that system. So yes, the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted those areas into Chicago, down to Indianapolis, heading into just north of Paducah region, back into the Louisville. Those are the most favored areas, even those areas into, into Michigan. You got low 70s, folks. That's very unusual to work with low 70 temperatures this time of year. And with that cold air aloft, that's going to produce some of those bigger hailstones. But I think as we get into the evening area, that by 9 o'clock, we're going to have a southern mode start to initiate uh, just south of the St. Louis region, back into the Indianapolis region, heading into Cincinnati. This is the re main reason why the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted and increased the risk in the overnight hours heading into a nocturnal threat. So I think the southern mode kind of gets going around nine o'clock, but really starts to elevate as we get deeper into the evening. We're talking 10, 11, 12, midnight, one, two, three, four o'clock in the morning. So if you live in this region, definitely park your car under cover tonight. If you got the garage, you got the carport to, to be able to put it under harm's way, I would definitely highly recommend to do that. And, and of course, set your uh, radio to include any warnings into the overnight area because this looks to be a nocturnal threat uh, for this region. And what's concerning is the, the, the elicity index. So we've got the, the northern mode. This is why we have the hatched risk in place for very large hail with these updraft potentials heading into northern Illinois, does include that southern mode of Michigan. But the second mode here, because there's going to be two systems, right? So that second mode really gets going into southern Missouri, highlighted over uh, southern portions of Illinois, going into Kentucky there, right along that boundary into uh, Indiana, back into portions of Ohio, and does include portions of West Virginia. So when, within this zone, these are the these are the areas that you got to be more susceptible. Not in not just the larger hail, but definitely the tornado threat is elevated in, and increased into the overnight main time frame. I would likely say between nine o'clock tonight to about three and four o'clock in the morning. So it's going to be a bumpy ride into the overnight, and they did in fact increase the uh, you know risk up here for probability of tornado to some areas of 10% or greater with the hatched risk. And the hatched risk implies you could have a little bit more significant tornado within 25 miles of a given point within the yellow circled area. That could include a EF2 type tornado. It has the dynamics to contend with later on this night. So that's why this is a, a serious situation that is a, that is increased this morning with the dynamics that's out ahead of this system with all the record high temperatures 
very unusual temperatures that we're having to contend with before this system unloads. And there's the squall line going into at three o'clock in the morning. This is three o'clock in the morning. This is where you could get some of these QLCSs, tornadoes on this leading edge of this, of this damaging wind squall line. So I think the hail threat likely subsides but the increased tornado threat and the damaging wind threat unfolds into the evening time frame as that nasty squall line will be racing. That's another thing with these systems. These things are going to be screaming at 50, possibly 60 miles an hour. So you're going to have little to no warning with this particular setup as very strong dynamics coming in on the backside. We'll start with the supercell initiation of very large hail change over to those isolated isolated tornadoes and then you got the squall line that will form into the overnight hours fish tailing east and then southeastward along that base and then you got the snow on the back side folks that's not a misprint that is snow in chicago folks yeah where you're going to be in the upper 70s it's going to be snowing tomorrow morning i'm not talking much snow but still, I mean, from record highs to snow, all in the all in the next 12 to 15 hours, that's what's coming, folks. So definitely buckle up in that region. And there's the cold front, right? These are actual temperatures waking up into uh, Wednesday. Look at the temperatures, 15, where you're going to be in the upper 70s today. That's a drastic drop. Very unusual to see something like that, especially not even 24 hours, right? Very sharp temperature gradients as uh, as this massive blast of cold air pushes. And of course, further south it gets, it loses its luster. Got some warmer air going over. There's no snowpack or anything like that. So it's gonna lose a lot of its punch the further south. But if you're living the northern side, you're definitely gonna feel those very sharp temperature gradients with this system because of all the higher wind gusts, right? I mean, you got a sharp gradient of the, of the sharp temperature you know, contrast of the highs and lows, and then all the winds, the higher winds of those 40, 50 miles per hour is going to make those wind chills below zero up here in Iowa and parts of Northern Illinois. Again, you go from 78 to below zero, that is an 80 degree wild ride, right? From a heat index to a wind chill. So yeah, I mean, it's going to be, uh, you know, just a shock to your body with that particular setup as that cold front will continue to dive south and it's going to feed a small line. So I think as these congeal together going into Wednesday, I don't think we have to terribly do be concerned about it too much, especially in the morning hours highlighted over Pennsylvania, going over West Virginia, going through Kentucky. These could be definitely stronger in the Kentucky region, but this will fish tail further south. And more as it does, the further south you get, it has more of a stronger capping inversion that's going to be associated with it because it's tapping into more of a drier air that's really highlighted over the middle part of the country. It's been really dry and it looks to continue to remain dry across that uh, it, that interior slot across the middle part of the country, such southern and central plains. There's a squall line, again, racing 50, 60 miles an hour. So by the time you get into Wednesday night, look how fast it's gone. It's all the way into Raleigh. I mean, it's all the way almost to off the coast here. We do have a little bit of a disturbance that's trying to form down there into New Mexico. Going to try out to ring out some precipitation. I think it does a little bit. But there's just not much. There's some very dry air in the middle part of the country, but there's the snow with it, right? For the next 48 hours, there's a snow swath. We're not expecting much. Again, some don't be surprised to see some snow, a possibly a dusting to one, maybe even some two inch amounts and some uh some higher spots. But overall, here's this here's the system. A little bit of pocket of cold air aloft that's trying to squeeze out some moisture. Again, these areas are very dry. So it takes a while to erode and eat away those layers of the atmosphere and moisten them up across this region. But you can get at least some snow in the Texas panhandle. It'll be a wet snow. I mean we're talking a 35 38 degree snow if you do get some but nonetheless you could get some snow after you've added some wildfires and some crazy hot temperatures the last couple of days but look what happens folks as soon as that wind turns around to the south again 
we go right back up for Saturday. I mean, those temperatures well above average and it's almost like deja vu. It's what we're set up released right now with another significant blast of cold air setting up across Western Canada that mainly dives out to the West, but further into the middle part of the country, look at all that red here in the, in the orange. That tells you with that subtropical jet lifting those well above average temperatures all the way to the Canadian border again. While the sharp dynamics of the cold blast across the West and much of the West Coast, as well as the Intermountain West gets the snow. And then we're talking record highs again by Sunday. Potentially right now, the National Weather Service is forecasting another 28 record high temperatures. You're back into the 90s, back into the 80s in Texas. But look what happens back in Illinois. You're mid 70s now. You go to below zero wind chills on Wednesday and you go right back up to mid 70s on Sunday with more record breaking temperatures. That is some crazy stuff all the next six days. So definitely buckle up. We are in for a wild ride, folks. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update. Why I protect you before and after storm.